Hello everybody, welcome to Sniff a Book, the place where we delve into life-changing books together. Today we're diving into When Things Don't Go Your Way, by the incredible Heeman Sunim. Now we all know life can throw us curveballs, right? This book, it's like a warm hug, full of wisdom and guidance to help us navigate those challenges. So, let's open our hearts and minds as we explore the top 10 highlights together. Are you ready? Let's go! In this first chapter, Heyman Sunim talks about something we've all struggled with, perfection. You know, that feeling that we have to get it all right all the time. But here's the thing, life isn't about being perfect, it's about growth honey, it's about learning. Sunim reminds us that it's okay to make mistakes, to stumble, to not have all the answers. It's in those moments that we learn the most about ourselves. So instead of chasing after this impossible ideal of perfection, let's embrace our imperfections. Let's celebrate our progress no matter how small. Remember, you are enough just as you are. Have you ever felt overwhelmed, like the world is just spinning too fast? The hustle and bustle of daily life can sometimes feel like too much to handle. Sunim talks about this in Chapter 2, and he gives us a simple yet powerful tool, our breath. That's right, just breathing. It sounds almost too simple, but the act of taking a deep breath can be incredibly transformative. When stress creeps in, when anxiety threatens to take over, take a moment to just breathe. Close your eyes if you can, and focus on the sensation of the air entering and leaving your body. Inhale deeply, feel the air, fill your lungs, and as you exhale, let go. Let go of the tension in your shoulders, the tightness in your chest, the racing thoughts in your mind. Let go of the tension, the worry, the fear. Imagine each exhale as a release, a way to expel the negative energy that is built up inside you. It's amazing how such a simple act can bring so much peace. The power of a deep breath lies in its ability to ground us, to bring us back to the present moment. So the next time you're feeling overwhelmed, remember to breathe. It's not just about the physical act of breathing but about giving yourself permission to pause, to take a break from the chaos. It's a gift you give yourself, a moment of calm in the midst of chaos. By focusing on your breath, you can create a small oasis of tranquility no matter where you are or what you're doing. This simple practice can help you navigate the challenges of life with a bit more ease and grace. So, take a deep breath and let the power of that breath guide you to a place of peace and calm. You deserve it. You know, we often try to be strong to handle everything on our own, but you know what? It's okay to ask for help. In fact, it's more than okay, it's essential. In this chapter, Sunim reminds us that we are not alone. We are part of a larger community, a network of relationships that can provide us with the support we need. We have people in our lives who love us, who want to support us. These connections are vital for our well-being. Don't be afraid to reach out to them to share your burdens, your fears. It's in these moments of sharing that we find relief and comfort. Sometimes just talking to someone, having them listen with an open heart can make all the difference. It can lighten the load we carry and give us a new perspective. Remember asking for help is not a sign of weakness, it's a sign of strength. It shows that you are aware of your limits and are willing to seek the support you need to overcome them. It takes courage to admit you need support. And it's in those moments of vulnerability that true connection happens. When we open up to others, we allow them to see our true selves, and this fosters deeper, more meaningful relationships. Reflect on the people in your life who have been there for you. Think about the times when their support made a difference. These moments are reminders that we are interconnected, that we thrive through our relationships. Building and maintaining these connections requires effort, but the rewards are immense. We gain a sense of belonging, of being understood and valued. So the next time you feel overwhelmed, remember that you don't have to go it alone. Reach out, connect, and let others be there for you. It's a gift to both you and them. Embrace the strength that comes from community and let it lift you up. Together, we can navigate the challenges of life with greater ease and joy. After all, life is a shared journey, and it's the connections we make along the way that truly enrich our experience. Chapter 4 introduces a powerful tool for self-discovery journaling. Now, some of you might be thinking, oh, Oprah, journaling? That's not for me. But trust me on this one. There's something so therapeutic about putting pen to paper, about letting your thoughts and feelings flow freely. It doesn't have to be fancy, just write what's on your mind, your joys, your fears, your dreams. Journaling can help you process emotions, gain clarity, and even uncover hidden patterns in your life. 
It's like having a conversation with yourself, a safe space to explore your inner world. In this chapter, Haman Sunim reminds us of the incredible healing power of nature. The natural world offers us a sanctuary, a place where we can escape the hustle and bustle of our daily lives. You know, sometimes we get so caught up in our busy lives we forget the simple joy of connecting with the natural world. The constant noise, the endless to-do lists, and the pressure to keep moving forward can be overwhelming. Take some time to step outside, to breathe in the fresh air, to feel the sun on your skin. These small moments can have a profound impact on our well-being. Go for a walk in the park, sit by the ocean, or simply find a quiet spot in your backyard. These activities can help us reconnect with ourselves and the world around us, listen to the birds sing, their melodies can be a gentle reminder of the beauty and simplicity of life. Nature has a way of calming our minds, soothing our souls, and helping us find balance. It's a place where we can let go of our worries and just be, and reminding us of the bigger picture. The vastness of the landscape, the majesty of the mountains, and the endless horizon can put our problems into perspective. It's a place where we can find peace, perspective, and a renewed sense of wonder. In nature, we can rediscover the joy of simply being present, whether it's looking at the stars, marveling at a waterfall, or exploring a beautiful landscape. These experiences can fill us with awe and gratitude. So take a moment to step outside and embrace the healing power of nature. Even when things are tough, there's always something to be grateful for. That's what Sunim teaches us in this chapter. Gratitude. It's so easy to focus on what's wrong, what's missing in our lives. But when we shift our perspective, when we start noticing the good, even the small things, it changes everything. Start a gratitude journal. Write down three things you're grateful for every day. It could be as simple as a warm cup of tea, a phone call with a loved one, or the sun shining through your window. Gratitude is a muscle. The more you use it, the stronger it gets. Chapter 7, The Importance of Joyful Living Life isn't just about work and responsibilities, it's also about joy. Sunim reminds us in this chapter to make time for the things that light us up, that make our hearts sing. What brings you joy? Is it dancing, painting, spending time with loved ones? Whatever it is, make time for it. It doesn't have to be hours on end, even small pockets of joy throughout your day can make a world of difference. Remember, you deserve to experience joy, it's not selfish, it's essential for a fulfilling life. Chapter 8. The Power of Helping Others You know, one of the most beautiful things we can do in this life is help others. In this chapter, Sunim talks about the transformative power of kindness. When we reach out to others, when we offer a helping hand, it not only makes a difference in their lives, but it also fills our own hearts with joy. Volunteer your time, donate to a cause you believe in, or simply offer a listening ear to someone who needs it. Kindness has a ripple effect, it spreads outwards, touching countless lives. Chapter 9, Embracing Self-Compassion. This chapter is so important because it's about something we often struggle with, being kind to ourselves. We can be so hard on ourselves, can't we? Sunim encourages us to treat ourselves with the same compassion we would offer a dear friend. Speak to yourself with kindness, forgive yourself for your mistakes, and celebrate your accomplishments. Remember, you are worthy of love and compassion, especially from yourself. Chapter 10. Embracing the winds of change. Change is an inevitable part of life. It can be scary, I know. But in this final chapter, Sunim reminds us that change can also be an opportunity for growth, for new beginnings. Instead of resisting change, let's try to embrace it with an open heart and an open mind. See the possibilities that lie ahead, the lessons to be learned. Remember, you are stronger than you think, and you have the power to navigate whatever life throws your way. Thank you for joining me on this journey through When Things Don't Go Your Way by Heyman Sunim. Remember, life is a journey and it's okay to stumble along the way. What matters is that we keep learning, keep growing, and keep supporting each other. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it, share it with your friends, and subscribe. Until next time, keep reading and keep shining your light.